Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Joseph. Today I'm here in the studio with Aisha. You can see the colors going on. <laughs> Styling by yours truly. <laughs> it's a combined effort because I added this and this just makes the whole thing epic and it was my idea. <laughs> anyway, so the setup is going to be done with two lights. I have my Godox 8600BM in the main lights modified in a 36 inch octa box from Glow. And I have the grid on there because I want the light to be directly on here. And then I'm going to be testing my new 12 by 56 inch strip box, also from Glow. Um, for a long time, when I'm doing my edge lights, I'm always using a smaller octa, and that doesn't give me a lot of length because uh, of the size. Always, it's just around like the head and shoulder. But this is a strip box, so at least. I know that I'm gonna get a long light from the top all the way to the bottom. And because the strip box is narrow, so it's gonna focus the light exactly where I want it to be. The reason why I like these glow modifiers is because all of them come with a grid, but I don't have the grid on this. In this case, I only have it on the main light. Cause I mean, it's already narrow. So wherever it goes, I know I've already focused it where I want it to be. So I don't really want the grid on there for that because it's going to also cut down the light power. Okay, I think um, I've been able to run you guys through the setup. I'm gonna walk through my camera gear and then let you know the settings as I shoot. So I'm gonna be using my 24 to 70, which has become my absolute favorite lens. If you want to get that, the link is down below. You can click it and purchase it. And it's paired with my Canon USR and also triggered by this Godox trigger. Uh, so that's pretty much it for the entire system and setup that we're going for today. So enjoy the rest of the behind the scenes as I direct. Even though she doesn't really need a lot of directing, she's a pro model. <laughs> we're gonna be working together to create awesome images for you guys. So enjoy. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, okay, so this is my Godox 8600BM, but in the strip box, I have my speed lights, the Godox V860 Mark II, but all of them can be triggered with the same trigger, and that is set to group B, and this is group A. So what I want to do, first of all, is turn off group A. So on the trigger, I can easily do that, and now it's off. So when I trigger, it's only the uh, strip box that is going off. So now I am going to figure out the settings that I need for the rim light. All right, so currently my settings are 1 over 125, F4 and ISO 200. So I'm gonna take my first test shot. And as the main light didn't go off, all we get to see is the strip box. And because of the hat, it's cutting off the light that's supposed to be edging her head out, but at least we see a spill over her jaw and neck and you can see it comes all the way down her leg as well so we're getting an almost full length rim light from the strip box and that is really really nice so i'm going to turn on my main light now and the group b light is 1 over 16 and then my main light which is the godox 8600 i'm going to start off at the lowest power so or even let's start at 1 over 64 and take a test All right, I like what you did, Aisha, so let's just keep that. Okay, so looking at the image, it's a little bit underexposed. So looking at my histogram, I can see that all of the information has been pushed to the left. So we need to add a little bit more light and I just want to do it with the main light and not my ISO. So I'm gonna go back from 64 and let's go to, let's say 16 and take another test. All right, and looking at the image right now, we can see again with the histogram that we've been able to spread out the information. So we have a little bit in the highlights, but it looks like we can still push it further. Instead of going to my flash power now, what I'd rather do is maybe reduce my shutter speed. So from one over 125, I want to take it to one over 100. Now the risk of doing one over 100 is if you have shaky hands, 
um, it's possible that your images are not going to be sharp but this lens has image stabilization so i'm going to turn it on and then at least it's going to guarantee me some sharpness no matter the shutter speed at least maybe till like 1 over 50 but i'm not going to be doing that so take another test All right, I think this pretty much brings me to an area that I really, really like. I like the colors. I like the way the light is hitting here and shaping here. It's a little bit contrasty and I really, really like that. It's making the whole setup look edgy and that is really nice. I also like the sheen that is being captured in the satin fabric that she's sitting on. And those are just like stools I've stacked up to give her, you know, something to prop it up a little bit all right so that is it for the lighting setup i'm gonna start shooting aisha now so do enjoy <laughs> all right so what i'll be doing is i'll be starting off from far here and the frame let me just give you an idea so the frame just ends somewhere here okay. so when you have posing you can like consider all those all right oh this is nice already yeah, stunning. Like I said in the beginning, Aisha knows how to pose. So I'm just going with her, just shooting. And if probably I find something that I like, I'll just make her redo it so I can get a few more frames. But I think I like everything. And it's almost like a one shot thing. Oh yeah, that's nice. Yeah, I want to, let me just come close. I like what you did. So let me just do like a close up of that. Yeah, yeah stunning. Beautiful. Okay. So we did a little bit of a DIY hookup at the back and I can see it's, but it's fine because the background is plain. <laughs> I can get rid of that in Photoshop, but yo, don't let that stop the flow. I think, probably let me just tag this in a little bit more because yeah, it's looking a little bit loose, if you can do it. Okay, so let's just do a few more of that, but I really like the way it's looking, the colors, the edge lights, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, stunning, stunning, beautiful. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so what I want to do now is probably just go to like around 35 and get closer to Aisha. Just put some distortion and see what I can get. My background is being narrowed some more because of the focal length I'm shooting at, but I just want to get that distortion and see. All right, yeah, that's dying. The white shots for some reason look a little dark and I think it's showing too much of the background, so it's not something I think I'll do. I'll stick with the 70 millimeters and then just be coming close and going back to A. I like that. Keep that stunning. Okay. So you can see it's the same setup. Nothing has changed. I only just made her go up a little bit. Yeah, that's nice. And even with that, I can still get close to her. Yeah, that's nice. Okay, I think we can do some without the hat just to see the difference. I'm sad I'm taking away my most prized prop. <laughs> Oh yeah, that's nice. Oh, so without the hats, it just gives it a different vibe. This is so nice. Yeah, perfect, perfect. Hold that. Nice. Okay, one more. Oh, stunning. Keep that. I'm gonna come close to you and make her feel the frame. Sometimes I always want my subject to feel the frame as much as possible just because, okay, now your hand is going outside <laughs> the backdrop. Uh, that's what happens when you shoot with like really narrow backdrops. It's a little bit restricting sometimes, but it's nice to shoot with because it's so compact and so small. So now that I have like a lot of full body shots, or like variations of those, I want to even get closer to her and get like 
detail shots, like certain parts that interest me. And I feel it helps with the editorial or the fashion story when you're telling something like that. So let's just compare the full body or the wide shots to like an establishment shots, right? And now we're gonna go in and just grab some few detail shots to help tell the story um, of the entire look basically. So that's what I'm gonna do now. Just focus on certain detail areas and then capture those. Once I'm already here, let me just start with like your face. Guys, this brings us to the end of today's video. I hope you had fun or at least learned something out of this. I'll be doing more shoots, more test shoots like these and then bring in the videos to you guys to enjoy. Hopefully learn something as well. Um, and then yes, I'm loving my new strip box. If you want to purchase it, the link is down below. Click it, purchase it. Uh, if you're using it and you like it as well, let me know in the comments down below. I'm also going to be putting some of the raw files from today's shoots in my Patreon. So if you're not a patron, I recommend you click the link down below to become a patron for $7. You're going to have access to raw files from this video and some of my previous videos. I upload raw files every single week or every single time that I have a new video out. So become a patron today to support the channel. And uh, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Remember, don't ever give up. Thank you.